to this channel where we spread love and positive vibes. And I want to start by thanking our new subscribers, our returning subscribers. We really appreciate you. And I think I say that every day, guys, and I mean it. We really appreciate you. And we always pray for you guys that may the Lord bless you, may the Lord enlarge you, may the Lord protect you, may the Lord shield you together with your family. We can never take this for granted. That you sit down and watch our videos, you comment, you like, you direct us, you correct us, and all what you do. We don't take it for granted, guys, and we really thank you so, so, so much. And today, the stories that I'm going to feature today actually makes me sad. One of them, as I watched it, my tears fell because I really felt for these people. My heart bred for them. And uh, as black people, you really feel for your own brothers and sisters who are there outside suffering. And therefore, today's video features two Caribbean islands that are going through a tough, tough time. And I'm going to start with uh, about Christmas trees. I think Christmas trees going to jail or rather being captured by the police officers in Trinidad was an eye opener to most of us. And uh, we came to know how our brothers and sisters are there in Trinidad. What is going on on the ground in Trinidad? The reason why I'm saying this, we all witnessed Christmas trees going to the ghettos where the people, majority of the people are, and I want to say clearly, even here in Kenya, majority of the poor people are in the ghetto. And these are the people that have the power, the ability to vote for the politicians. Every, after maybe some years, here in Kenya after five years, we vote readers, and those readers never get to remember the people who voted them, the people who lined to vote for them. And this is the scenario I saw in Trinidad. So Christmas trees, went and shot videos showing us how the youth are having a rough time in Trinidad because of maybe lack of jobs, because of desperation, because of what is going on on the ground. The people who are there in power don't actually know what happens on the ground. And if they know, they know. Because I've seen it even in Africa. People go through tough times. Like in this century in Kenya, we had the demolitions of uh, the buildings that were near the rivers because of the floods that were there. But I want to tell you, the people that, that are mostly affected are people from the ghetto. And because I am a teacher and I teach in the ghetto, I can tell you for sure, people are going through a rough time. Yesterday, a lady came and uh, it was, she was having the son. The son had a disease that has made him, him to have a hole here on the neck. And that hole is removing parts. But this lady cannot afford to take this boy to better hospital. He cannot afford to cater even for the food because the house was demolished and some of her property have been kept somewhere and she's struggling to raise up the children because she has no job. And I saw this is the case in some of these countries that we are seeing uh, being brought to us by this journalist. So we saw the desperation of the youth in Trinidad, what they are going through. And I actually myself saw Christmas trees starting a bad. If I'm not wrong, if I'm wrong, you can correct me, by the way. I'm ready for correction. I'm ready for anything. So, you can actually correct me. I saw him together with this youth trying to find out what this youth can be engaged in so that they do not engage themselves in the crime. And actually, this should be the work of the government. 
to make sure that these people have jobs. These people are utilized properly. Their talents are tapped because we saw the high talent in the youth of Trinidad. In the bar, in the singing they were doing, we could see clearly there's, there is a lot of talent that can be tapped in Trinidad. And therefore Chris also tried to bring together the gangs that are fighting in Trinidad. And when I went, I went to find out why these gangs are fighting, I found that they fight for competition of resources. Because they are competing for minimal resources and therefore they keep on fighting and they group themselves so that they can establish themselves in the resources that are available. Some of them fight because of uh, wanting to gain power in the drug business. And for the drugs to be abolished and to completely cease, the government must actually be involved to make sure that these youths are busy. They create jobs. They create businesses. They create talent tapping centers so that these youth do not engage in crime. So Chris went to prison. And the reason why I'm uh, shooting this video, it's not to narrate what is happening on the ground in Trinidad. It's to highlight the thirst of the people of Trinidad for liberation, for this uh, crime to end, for these things to come to an end. We clearly saw people carrying guns around the streets and their small children, their young people growing and they will grow to see what was happening to their brothers and, uh, and uh, to their older brothers and they will actually continue in the same trend and it will be a vicious circle that never ends. And therefore, I really, really appreciated what Chris did. Because I had someone along the streets as Chris was released from prison and he was going around the streets of Trinidad, the laugh from the people was epic. Vehicles were stopping, people were stopping, stopping him to have a photo with him, to, go, to actually talk with him and to actually tell him thank you and to appreciate him. And this taught me that the people of Trinidad are thirsty for liberation, are thirsty for crime to end, are thirsty for these guns to cease. And it can only be done by the people in power. And therefore someone along the way, I think he was the chairman to a certain football club. And he was saying, this is what Trinidad needs to awaken the government. So that the government can know there can be a stranger who can come all the way from where he came from. And come to their country and people embrace him. People are ready to open to him. People are ready to tell him their problems. Because these problems have been eating them. They have been in sorrows. They have been in sadness. They have been uh, going through a tough time. And therefore this savior who comes and he wants to listen to them, to give them a listening ear, to understand them, to be able to tell them everything is okay, they embraced him with all their power. We saw everywhere Chris was going after the release. People were ready to embrace him. People were ready to shout and tell him thank you. And declare freedom, shouted freedom. Because it shows people embraced what Chris Maastricht was doing. And I love what he said. I really love what he said. That while he was in police custody, the police were very professional, they treated him well, the prisoners were very nice to him, and everybody was good to him. That speaks highly of the prisons in Trinidad and Tobago. And I really appreciated the people of Trinidad because you know guys, when this case came out, we were confused because we didn't know much about the land of Trinidad. We didn't know much about the people of Trinidad. But we have come to see the people of Trinidad are great people. They embraced what uh, Chris Masteris was doing and they actually supported the step he has taken to bring freedom, to bring liberation, to bring this 
uh, fight and gunshots and crime to an end because no one wants to live in fear no one wants to live not knowing what will happen to you what will happen to your son what will happen to your mother what will happen to your uncle to your aunt everybody want to live in peace everybody want to hear there is a peace there is peace in the environment they are in and i think this was a great step to awake just like that chairman of the club said this was a great step to awake the people of uh, the, the government of Trinidad and Tobago so that they can look into this problem critically without not seeing as if Christmas tree was a, actually an enemy who wants to portray their country as bad. And I want to tell the people of Trinidad, it's not only in Trinidad, or any other island in Jamaica that has got crime. Crime is all over the world. And the way to curb crime is to make sure that the youth is engaged, their talents is tapped, they have their energy is directed in the right way. And even here in Kenya, we still have the same problem. And that is why I'm saying the people in power have the role to play. They have to take care of our youth. They have to awake and embrace that there is a problem that needs to be solved that it needs to be looked at so that people can live in peace so that people can enjoy living in their respective homes without fear that somebody will come with a gun and threaten them and kill them and harm them so i really appreciated what i saw on the streets of Trinidad as christmas trees and the gentlemen they were with were walking along those streets the vehicles were stopping. The hooting of the vehicles was magic. The people were ready to embrace him. The people were ready to stop and talk to him. The people were ready to tell him, you are doing a great thing. And this showed that for sure, Trinidad and Tobago had a problem. And it needs to be addressed. It needs to be arrested. It needs attention. And this is actually a whistle brewer to the problem in the ground in Trinidad and Tobago. So I hope the government will take this positively and start looking into the solutions to this problem. And guys, I told you when I was starting this video, I wanted to highlight two things that has made me so, so sad. One of them was the Trinidad and the problems the youth are facing. And uh, I hope there will be a solution soon. I hope this youth, can, their efforts and their energy can be directed somewhere so that they can live a good life. Let me tell you guys, I have seen young people joining crime, joining other groups because of poverty. Poverty can make you to do anything. Poverty can direct you to the wrong group. Poverty can make you to actually do what you did not mean to do. And therefore, it is very, very important to embrace when people come and highlight the problem the country is facing, the problem that is on, it, on the ground, it is good to embrace and look for solutions. That is my take on the Trinidad and Christmas trees and what was going on in uh, Trinidad. And the people were sowing a lot of dust to end what is going on in Trinidad. And I hope something will be done to end what is happening on the streets or rather on the ghettos of the Trinidad and Tobago. Very, very important. Let me come to the other country that I wanted to talk about. Yeah. So, the other country that I wanted to talk about is Haiti. We all know that Haiti has been faced with a lot of unrest, with a lot of fights, with a lot of things that are happening on the ground. But we came to run this entry. It's not every place in Haiti that, that has got these guns. It is only in one town. And I want to really talk to the people of Haiti. And if to the gang members can listen to me, or their families, or their relatives, I want to tell you, your enemy is not your brother. Your enemy is not your fellow black person. 
your enemy is the person that does not want your country to develop. Your country to get freedom. Your country to get liberated. Your country economy to go up. That is your enemy. And the people of Haiti, if you can join hands, if you can embrace unity, if you can embrace one another, if you can consider the other person is not your enemy, you can actually take Haiti to the next level. Haiti has got a lot of potential. Actually, we learned that it was the first country to get independence. And therefore, this country would have been gone high in terms of economy, in terms of education, in terms of development projects. Because if it was the first country to attain independence, we expect that it would have gone very, very far, far away. And uh, as I was looking at the video of African Tigress and the beautiful Haiti, and they were in a town called Milo, if I'm not wrong, and that town looked so beautiful. The waterfalls, the epic beaches, the landscape, the everything, the people of Haiti, they are great people. And I came to remind them of something that I learned about Haiti. In Haiti, between 18, 18, let me say 18, and uh, actually the 18th century. In 18th century, they arrived a man. And this man was a great man. And he taught us in the whole world, including Haiti, including Jamaica, including Trinidad and Tobacco, including Grenada, including uh, Cremon Iran, including tax, including all the Caribbean islands that I have not mentioned. And the whole world, not even the Caribbean islands, the whole world. He taught us not to have the grasshopper spirit. As black people, we have the ability to be what God destined us to be. We have the ability to go to the next level. We have the ability to shine in the whole world. If only we can believe in ourselves. If only we can embrace one another. If only we can love one another. If only we can stop jealousy, envy, competition, and embrace one another as brother and sisters, just like the Jamaicans say, one people, one love. If we learn to embrace one another, we can go far. And the reason why I'm saying this is because of this gentleman. He taught us a lot. And the gentleman lived in the 18th century. And his name was Henry Christopher. Henry Christopher, for those who don't know, was born a slave. And therefore, he had the ability to actually hate himself. He had the ability to just not see as if he can go anywhere. To be, to develop an inferiority complex. He had the ability to say, after all, being born a slave, I can be nothing. I can be nobody. I will stay here and be satisfied with being a slave. But this gentleman refused even when he was surrounded by people who saw black people as if they were uncivilized, as if they don't think, as if they know nothing, as if they cannot start something and become big. He actually stood in the midst of a lot of negative beliefs. In the midst of being seen as nobody. And he stood and said, I will prove to these people that I am somebody. I'll prove to these people that even black people are human beings with a brain who can do something great and it, it can be seen. So this guy, Henry Christopher, came from slavery, fought in the American Revolution War, fought in the Haiti Revolution War, and became the king of Haiti. And when he attains the kingdom status, he started building a lot of forts, a lot of buildings, and he decided to show that black people have a mind, have a brain, can do anything. He started building a palace.
Paris that was to compete with the French Paris. And he constructed a very big Paris. And these people who thought that Africans can do nothing, they came to realize there is a brain here who is doing great. So he built the Paris, and as African digress was going through that Paris, I could see that this man had brain. This man was epic. This man was a great man. And actually the writer says, there at least there existed a man who was greater, and maybe he could be the greatest man in the whole world. This Paris became a starting point for the people that never thought the Bracks could do anything to believe that Bracks have brain. Bracks can do anything. Bracks can develop and reach places. And this is the message that Christopher Henry left to us. He was a very rich man. Very, very rich. And like I have said, he constructed many forts. And he actually con constructed forts in America so that he can preserve the freedom of Haiti. You can see how great he was. And I want to talk to the people of Haiti and the people of uh, the Caribbeans and the people of Africa. We can be what God destined us to be. We can be great people in the land. Our countries can be reading there. We can be called the first developing countries instead of the third. Because where there is a will, there is a way. We have to be united. We have to embrace one another. We have to work, to work towards one goal. Becoming independent. Just like Marvel Galve was actually preaching to, we can become independent financially and economically and everything if we embrace one another, if we embrace unity, if we embrace working hard and believing in ourselves and believing that we can. One time, Obama, the president of America then, who is actually has a Kenyan origin, he said, yes, we can do it. And I believe we can do it. Unity is power. Haitian people, we love you. And we pray that you can be united to be a great lad that can be admired by the whole world. We are waiting for you because we know you have the power. Henry Christopher taught you that you have power. Using that power, you can be what you want to be. You can be great. You can be liberated. You can have the freedom you want. You can be peaceful once again. You can grow your country to greater heights of prosperity and economic independence. Wishing you are the best and wishing Africa and Caribbeans and the whole world where the Bracks are. Peace and oneness. Bye bye. See you.